Hi, this is Matt with QuickRegisterSEO.com, and in this video, I'm going to show you 17 examples of headlines spammers use to trick me to click. But before I go on, I'd like to ask you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. Now, this email and blog post is a follow up to my blog post and video seven ruthlessly manipulative techniques grifters use to get you to click on any website basically it's an article on how to write really good headlines that get people to click on your headlines because if people don't click beyond your headlines they don't see your content and you haven't communicated your message now i have been collecting subject lines that i'm getting on from spam and from marketers that actually got me to click all right and i figured we could learn some things about this now i've been collecting these for a while and that's before i wrote the article on you know, how to write good headlines but it's really interesting to see how many of the practices and lessons that are in the article and i'll put the link to the article uh on how to write great headlines in in the description below and also at the end you'll be able to segue into the the video which explains it but it's really fascinating how many uh, of these spammers or just marketers, whatever, are using these techniques. Now, here is one that I clicked on. We'll say number one. And simply the title was nothing to see here. I mean, it makes you laugh because they're telling you there's nothing to see here. But now we have to see what the nothing is to see there. There's something about the curiosity uh, that that just gets me gets me to click and so i out of pure curiosity i, I click to see that um now you could use this and segue that into however whatever clever way you have to communicate your s a message now here's another one that said hey matt it called me out by my first name which is always a good thing and that's one of the techniques it's calling out your user you know talking directly to them future super earner all right, this one appeals to my pride and to my ego. And it uses the technique number four in my article, flagging the reader or calling out the reader personally. He's saying, hey, Matt, you're a super earner. Uh, so I clicked on that one. Good job. Now, what I love about this is the simplicity. You know, a lot of times, you know, if you can use these techniques and simplify it, I mean, that's a really a master who can do that. Just good job. Well, what good job? Hey, everyone loves compliments. I don't want to miss a good compliment. So, you know, I, I could, I clicked right on it. They could have said, Hey, Matt, good job. Maybe that would have been better. Now this one is really good. Need your advice. Again, Matt, they called me out. They had the personalization tag on in their emails. And this really doubles down on the flag, the reader, because this goes beyond just calling me out. It is directly asking for my engagement and we kind of naturally want to help so do you, you know and we want to give advice that also appeals to our ego hey well you you found my opinion so much we need your advice this one works quite well um, need your advice and if you need your advice from your list hey might be a good idea to send them out an email to maybe send them a poll send them a questionnaire and say what would you like to hear more of uh, what do you like? What do you don't not like? Always a good strategy. Now, number five, my private number. Okay, I admit this one was some sort of dating scam. It probably really was a scam, not just marketers. Um, but I thought about it and, you know, offering, offering personal service is a way that you can distinguish yourself from a lot of the big boys. If you're willing to just offer personal service and speak directly to your prospects and just send them out your phone number and talk with them. Most people aren't willing to do that. So that can distinct, that can distinguish you from much larger, more impersonal competitors. I am expecting your reply. Again, this is begging me to, to respond, to engage. And you're like, well, what's going to happen if I don't reply? Is it bad? Is it good? Hey, I want to find out. So I clicked on this. Now, this number seven, I actually used in an email and it did work really well. Did you see this? 
Now I sent this out because I wanted to people see a video that I had sent out earlier with another title and I wanted to send this to people who hadn't opened it. And you know, I want to make sure they saw this again, it arouses curiosity. See what in your, you're asking them to engage. You're asking them to come see it. It really worked. Did work well. Now it has been a while we've missed you. Usually you could send this out to subscribers who haven't opened your emails in a while in a way to re-engage again they're calling you out they're talking about emotion missing someone you that we talk about in the article about power words emotional words if you can use power words and emotional words you can generally get a response you're looking to get the person to open the email here just to respond to engage and that that one did a really nice job of that so you might consider that if you wanted to send out to subscribers, um, an email to subscribers who haven't opened your emails in a while. Number nine, I'm unhappy. <laughs> that is straight up appealing to your emotions. If someone's emailing you saying that you're unhappy, hey man, I want to find out why and if there's something I can do. And there also is sort of a sense of urgency, certainly a strong emotional appeal in that. In this and if you look at tip number five in my article uh that i'll put below it talks about power words like I, I spoke spoke of earlier and there's there's a list of over 400 of these power words that you can use to arouse emotion now my father said this to you now this uses a technique of specificity you know wow that's kind of particular my father said this to you whose father uh, and in the end, they're calling me out. They're saying, they said this about you. So it's, it's not this, it's not vague. It's very specific. My father said this about you. I wanted to open this up. So I did. Now, this is a brilliant use of adding a sense of urgency. And it's so simple. Sometimes these really simple ones work. Five minutes. That's it. A lot of times it's what you don't say five minutes. What, what's going to happen? All right. This is a sense of urgency. Something's going to happen in five minutes. I better find out what it is. They in two words, one is just a number, which is the number technique, by the way, which is another technique using a s odd number, which are for some reason are more credible than even numbers, uh, and using a number rather than even writing out the number five F I V E because it helps our, us wrap our minds around the concepts. It's just a psychological, it's like uh, brain candy. We like it. I guess this is goodbye. This is tripling down on emotion on also loss. You know, we're going to lose something if we don't open this email. Do I really want this person out of my life forever? Maybe I do. And you know, this is did a really good job of using emotion. More emotion coming in number 13, heartbreaking news. How could you not open that up? Even if you don't want it, even if you don't want heartbreaking news, you got to find out what it is. Of course, you better have something to follow up with there that, that is reasonable. Okay. You don't want to lose credibility. Again, same thing with all these titles. You can't just use these titles and put something completely unrelated. If you're going to say heartbreaking news, you better have some heartbreaking news. All right. Otherwise, it's a deceptive headline and you don't want to do deceptive headlines because then you'll lose credibility with your audience. So it, you have to, it has to actually relate to something real. Four hour warning. There we would go with urgency again, calling me out by my first name. Doors are slamming shut. These are power words. These are words that evoke images of a door slamming shut. We're evoking loss here. We've got a time limit, urgency. A lot is packed in the, there. You need to know this. This appeals to our practicality. It's, they're saying that we have to know something. Uh, be, it, it's imperative that we know something. So it has a practicality with urgency. Again, short and simple, which I like. This is the most important email I've ever sent. Now, if you send this one out, it did better be an important email. So it's not one you could just send off every single day. All right. It's going to be like the boy who cried wolf. You're not going to have any credibility to left. So it better be a doozy if you're going to do this one, but it does work. 
can I pay you this week? Very interesting. Now, this is also appeals to practicality and specificity because this person knows his audience. He knows that these are people who are looking to make money online and they're going to respond to this. He also knows that he didn't say, can I pay you in six months? He said this week because it knows it's a crowd that is going to be, is looking to make money relatively quickly. So he's speaking directly to his crowd by sending this out. And also he's talking about practicality because everyone likes to get paid, of course, in general. So these are 17 examples and you can use these to develop your own, your own headlines uh, and tailor them to your business. Again, they have to make sense. Uh, you have to have credibility. You can modify these to suit your needs. But spending time on your headlines is super, super important. Like I've said many times, they don't click through your headline and read the first sentence of, of, of your, uh, whatever it is, a video, an article, a blog post, an ad. You're not going to communicate your message. You're not going to get any opt-ins. You're not going to get any sales if you don't do this. So if you like this, please give this a like uh, on the video. I uh, yeah. like to invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. I will put links to these articles below as well. Both the seven techniques on how to create irresistible headlines. I, my, I called it something else up here. All right. Seven ruthless manipulative techniques grifters use to get you to click on, uh, on any headline. Basically it's an article on going into detail on these techniques. And these are some examples. So. Hope you like this. This is Matt with quickregisterseo.com. Thank you so much.